and we're going. So welcome to our digital literacy workshop. Um, this week, again, we're looking at some more things, um, Google Apps for Education. As we um, dive in, and uh, I'm hearing all kinds of exciting ways and seeing exciting ways teachers are beginning to use this, um, either to collaborate with each other or to work with their students, um, all different levels, so that's really exciting. And so today, uh, one of the questions that we are hearing as we're getting started is, um, just that whole idea of how do I get assignments out to kids and how do I get them, um, how, what's the best way to do that? So today we're going to um, take a little look at uh, templates and um, I'm going to say templates in quotes, um, uh, view only documents. So in the um, chat window, I put the, um, the link to the notes. I also sent it by um, email. So you should have the link to the notes. Just a reminder, um, as we get started, that, so here's the notes, um, that, that um, in order to get clock hours, uh, you need to make sure that you um, do the reflection survey. And I've got that linked in the notes um, as well in the e as in the email that I sent you. So, um, it's good to be a reflective teacher, so this is a way to do that. And I do appreciate uh, reading them. It helps me kind of know how to guide and where to go next, but hopefully it's helpful to you too to um, think, about, think about what you're learning. Okay. And um, in the notes, and I'll pull the notes over here for just a second. Maybe. Try doing that. Oh, there they are. In the notes, um, you'll see that, so I put the link to the survey and then the link to the presentation, which isn't all that exciting because we're actually going to be looking at Google Docs as we, as we do this, and then also um, the link to where the archive will be. Um, I'm hearing from a lot of people who are um, able to go back and take a look at those archives or to share them with somebody when they have a question, so hopefully those will become a good library for us. Move this back over here. Somehow I have two of the same thing. Mm. Too many things up. And now we're lost. We have two different things going here. Okay. So I've managed to use our thing. So I'm going to use my organization system here in my nice folders. You get to see me jump into my folders. Here is our presentation slide. And this week we are doing this. It was all part of the plan. Okay, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is the actual template piece. Um, and to do that, we're going to, um, so we're going to look at where to find templates and how to share and view, um, to share view only files and then how to share a template. So we're going to go into our Google Drive. And in your Google Drive, used to be there was something that just, you had the choice of doing templates right away. For some reason, when they updated the version, they took that out. And so uh, you have to add it back in in order to uh, look at templates. So the way that you do that is if you go to create, and excuse me, and if you go down here where it says more apps or connect more apps, and then type in templates, You'll see there's actually two different um, choices here. There's a drive template gallery, and that's what I've used here. And so I just click the connect button. I've already done it, so now it says wait. But if after you click the connect button there, then you go back um, to your create, you'll see that you have that option here. So if you're going to create something from a template, 
that's where you could go. So we're going to do that in a minute, but I just want to share that again. So um, you have to add that little functionality to your Google Drive. So you go to Create, Connect More Apps, and then type in Templates. And then you'll see that Drive Template Gallery right there. Now you'll notice um, what I just did where, where all these apps are right here. That's a whole other lesson for another day. There's some really cool things that you can add to Google Docs, Docs and work with them. That, but we'll do that in a different day. So now that you have that available, if I go to, again, I'm going to do this again, and I go to Create, and then from Template, you'll see since I am in um, Google Apps for Education, I've got the public templates that you could get from any Google account. So if I click over here, very slow for some reason. I don't know why. Um, thank you. So I've got the public templates, and then I have a tab for Mount Vernon School templates, templates I've used, and then templates I've created. So uh, some different ways of searching. Right now, um, as you saw a second ago, and I should, we have no Mount Vernon School District templates yet. Um, as we get going here, we can actually share some templates with, uh, not today, but um, we can actually, um, as we create templates, if it makes sense to share them with um, everybody in the district, we can actually put those there. So we can start building our own library of templates. Suggestions for things like um, um, Cornell Notes template or a K KWL chart or things that all of us would be using or maybe a teacher uh, unit planning sheet or things like that. Things that would be um, Specifically, uh, specifically for our district, but not just for our classroom. Okay, but I'm going to go to public templates now because we're not going to see much if we look in Mount Vernon right now. And we'll slowly wait. So in public templates, these are just things people have created and they said you can use them. And there's all kinds of things. If you look over here, you'll see um, cards and calendars and um, letters, all kinds of things. There's all kinds of things for um, using spreadsheets to um, put in calories for how much you eat every day or exercise, all kinds of things like that. So there's tons of stuff there. You can also narrow it down by uh, documents, spreadsheets, presentations. And then also by category. So students and teachers, it's usually the best place for us to look. And, um, and then you can kind of scroll through these and look and maybe get some ideas of things that, that could be used as templates. And the nice thing about a template is once you have chosen a template, um, you can edit it and make it your own. So you can make it work for, for your needs. So sometimes it's nice to take a look here to see if somebody's already done that work for you so you don't have to recreate the wheel. So that's how um, you get a template. So again, um, the world's coming to an end outside my window. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm just going to pull up an example here of um, these class notes. So I can take a preview to see what this is just somebody has shared. And if I like this, this class notes template, um, I could click on use template. So basically what that does is that just copies that template into my drive. And now it's a copy of that. And I can use it for whatever I want. I can change the name. I can share it. That kind of thing. So that's one thing you can do with templates. I have sirens every day, <laughs> Kim. It's that active place where, I, where I'm working. And I, can, and I can't usually handle not standing up and looking out the window to see what's going on either. Okay, back to, back to what I'm doing here. So, um, so that is 
that is how to grab a template that has already been created. Does anybody have any question about doing that? Okay, I'm really watching the question thing this time, just to make sure. Okay, so again, to add a template from, uh, from your drive, go to the drive, click Create, go to Add More Apps. So now that once you've done that, you've got that piece done, and now you can go and you can search for, for templates that you might want to use. So that's a good place to find uh, graphic organizers and things like that. And I'll share some templates with you in a minute to give you some ideas of some ways you might want to use that. Okay. But here's the big thing that I wanted to talk about today. And this isn't technically creating a template, um, but it's a great way to share information with your students. So let's take um, a document. And I'm going to go back to my um, apps here. So let's say <clears throat> I want to share this KWL chart. So I'm going to open this up. And I have just a really simple KWL chart. And I want all of my students, or maybe students in small groups, to complete this KWL chart. Okay, so this isn't a project that the whole class is working on the same thing at the same time. This is something they're all going to turn in individually or they're going to turn in in small groups. So I want them all to, to have this document, and I want them to be able to, to edit it. So what would happen if I just went up to share, and I said, um, anyone with the link, or I gave it to my students in their groups or whatever, but if I said, um, if I said on there that they could edit it, so then what would happen? is that every person would be editing on this same document, which could be a great activity, but if that's not the activity that you want to be happening, then you don't want that to happen here. So what, what you need to do is, once you've got your template or whatever you're working with um, ready to go for the kids or teachers or whoever you're working with, you're going to click on Share, and you're going to say, Whatever, you can either list the names of the students or the group that you want to share with, or you can provide them with the link and then do the anyone with the link. And then I'm going to say anyone with the link can view. Okay. So now, when students get this and they open it up, they're not going to be able to, um, I'm actually going to share this um, with me as a student, so you can see that. It's already shared that way. Um, so when students, when students get this, this is what it will look like. So I'm going to pop over to my student account. Take a look at my, there we go. And then my student account, for some reason I don't have money. Drive showing the there today. Okay, so I'm in my student account, and I go to Shared With Me. I've already found it. I, I'm going to have to search for it because I shared it before. There we go. So here's the KWL chart. And if I did this right, which I'm not sure that I, yeah. So you'll, you'll see here that I can't edit this. And so what I would do as a student, my teacher shared this with me, and it's view only. So I'm going to go to File, make a copy, and then I'm going to label this for me. So I'm going to call it whatever I need to call it. Um, and remember we talked about earlier the importance of having some kind of a naming scheme so it always makes sense. Um, so we, we could call this KWL chart on um, whatever we're studying. Civil War. Okay. So now that student still has that read-only copy that's just going to look like this, but now they can pop into the copy that they created for themselves and do what they need to do. 
and then they could share the copy with their, their teacher when they're finished. So you only had one document, you were able to share it with all of your students, and then they all have their own work because they just learned to go to um, file, make a copy, and then they have their own work. Okay. Another way that you can do that, I'm still looking for questions over here, so if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Another way you can do that that's even a little bit easier is if I go to um, my teacher file again, and I'm going to go here. So I have, the, I have a folder here. <clears throat> um, I'm going to click on the social studies folder. So I have this um, social studies folder here, and I could put everything I put in this folder, I could, I could label it. So I've got the folder. I'm going to go back again because I left two steps. So here's the folder, and I could share that folder, and I could share it as um, just view only. And so when I share it as just view only, everything I put into that folder is just view only. So if the students have that shared folder on their drive, I don't even have to share it with them. I just put it in my folder and it shows up in their folder for them to access. Okay, I see a couple of questions. Okay, so Greg says, well, you can see this, but when Greg says, when the students log into Google Drive, they don't see the they don't get the editing tools. But when they log into Google.com and then click on the drive, it all works. I don't know why that is. Uh, we'll have to explore that some more. So, and Tricia asked, um, that copy is still a shared doc with the teacher. So, okay, so that's a good question, Tricia. So again, the other thing that we need to to teach our students is when they're creating that copy. The first thing that they always do is they, they, they give it a title and then they share that, that document with editing privileges for their teacher. So the teacher automatically gets that document and is able to do whatever they would need to do with editing. Um, so that's just kind of a, another one of those procedures that, that makes sense. So, so when a student uh, copies their document, they put their name on it and they share it with their teacher right away. And the nice thing about that is not, not just sharing it with their teacher when they're finished with it, but sharing it from the very beginning. So a teacher can log in at any time and see where the students are in the process. Any more questions on that? We're about done here. I wanted to share some things down here at the bottom. Um, I've got a couple of examples to get your mind going with this. Um, so I shared a really simple KWL chart um, already. And then another very simple one is this um, Cornell Notes. We, we do lots of Cornell Notes, so that's another really simple one um, that we can do. Um, but then some really cool ones. Um, there's a couple. We're going to talk about um, presentations next week. And here's an example of an overachiever teacher who has done something incredible. So she created this template for her students to build um, vocabulary, basically flashcards. And so this is a template for them to use, and it shows that they're supposed to put a video here, put an image here, put their definition here. And she has gone as far as to, um, to insert in this template videos, links to videos that show them how to do all of those things. So that's a pretty cool thing to kind of peruse and see what her ideas were for that. Really nice scaffolding and a really good example um, to lead us to what we're going to be doing next week when we come in here. Um, here's another one that she did. Um, in social studies. So she created a template for the kids and it walks them through the process of creating their presentation um, in social studies. So she set all that up. They get that as a, a view-only document. They make their copy. 
and then they create their own work. And then the last thing I wanted to share as far as um, uh, resources, this is a really, this is a, um, this resource, sorry, it, it's, a, it's a presentation done by a ELA teacher, um, and she's got a lot of stuff here, and I know I'm flying through this because that's not the part that I wanted to show you right now, but it is worth seeing the whole thing. So she's got several examples of how she's using um, Google Docs templates to um, teach to the Common Core. And you can kind of take a look through here and see some of her ideas um, and see how maybe you could use those in, in your class. Okay, so those are just some examples of what you could do there. Jumping back here to my um, thing, I see, um, so the, the, Tricia, the, the templates are shared in the uh, notes. So, um, I, and I shared the notes in the email, and they're also in the um, chat window. So you can click on there to get to the, the chat window. Okay. And so just, again, I kind of alluded to this earlier. Next week we're going to look at Google presentations during this time, and just a quick intro, and, some, and, and I'll give you some examples of how that's used. Um, and just a reminder to do your reflection form. I'm always amazed at how fast this time goes. Um, if you have any questions um, based on this information or as you start kind of trying to put your head around how you're going to do things in your class, please don't hesitate to ask me um, or let me know if something wasn't clear so I can make it um, more clear for you. Any other questions? Any, does anybody have an idea of uh, something that they might share with students in this way? Sen sentence patterning charts, book report forms, perfect. Those are perfect things. Thank you. You guys get gold stars. Okay, and speaking of gold stars, um, I have I won something at a conference uh, last week, and um, in the near future, I'm going to be doing a contest. It's going to have to do with um, Google presentations, and uh, you'll be able to enter to win that prize. So that's just a little heads up. The other thing um, that I wanted to share is on um, October 28th, I believe it is. It's the Monday. Yeah, that's October 28th. So our digital literacy um, workshop webinar that week is actually going to be um, happening as a um, all admin meeting is happening. So the whole administration is going to be sitting in one place watching the, um, the, um, the, the webinar. And I would love to have some um, teachers jump into the webinar and share some way that they're using uh, Google Apps for Education in the classroom. So if you want to volunteer for that, that would be great. So, um, so Greg is saying students cannot create slideshows on an iPad, but they can see them if they're already created. Can they edit existing ones? I don't think they can right now, but I think it's getting close to being able to do that. Yeah, that is um, one thing that um, is a frustration, but they do show up really nicely on the iPad, so it's a nice way to share contact, content with students. All right. So you guys have a wonderful week, and thank you for coming, and please let me know how I can help you.